God bless you and thank you for joining me in the study of the Word of God. So we're going to continue where we stopped, which is um, we're looking at um, false teaching and false teachers, and uh, we're going to be looking at the fourth characteristic of false teaching and false teachers. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a problem which is um, morality by majority. That is, the sense of right and wrong is no longer um, decided by the truth of the Word of God. It's no longer based on the authority of the Word of God. It is based on majority. It is based on what people want. It is based on opinion polls rather than the word of God so that we find today that especially especially in the West um, our, our politicians make laws pass bills based on what most people want they pass bills pass laws based on what the majority of people um, what not according to the Word of God um, that's because they want to get re-elected and um, the past that come from being a politician, the connections and you know the finances that come through that. So we find bills like um, of, of same-sex same marriage, um, abortion, euthanasia, you know, and passed even though it's contrary to the word of God. Um, there was a bill um, that was defeated in America. Uh, it's called the Born Alive Bill. Um, by, uh, it was defeated in the American Senate by 56 votes to 41 votes. And what's this bill? What's this Born Alive Bill about? It, 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 it means if um, a, a child, that, if a baby that was meant to be aborted survived the abortion and was born alive um, the baby can be killed the baby can still be killed and when you think about it it's very horrid it's very you know um very it's, it's evil it's horrendous it's it's wickedness you know that um, people who whose constitution is based on Christian values could vote that a living child born could be killed just because of personal rights just in the name of personal rights but this is contrary this is murder the Bible said that I shall not kill but this is what we see happen today that is this is when morality you know um, you know is de determined by majority what majority people what the, um, uh, people want but the sad thing is that it is, it's, not, it's not stopping with the politicians. It's now invading our church world um, in the West. Um, that is, church leaders today are following popular opinions as well, rather than the word of God. An example I have for you is um, the Church Synod, Church of England Synod in the UK, um, passing same-sex same -sex marriage you know, uh, um, which is contrary to the word of God. Uh, this was voted, voted in the House of Synod. Um, the bishop, which is the higher cler clergy, um, uh, uh, voted against same-sex marriage, but because the Synod, um, the Assembly, uh, the Council, um, consists not just only of the bishops, but the clergy, lower clergy, and the laity, you know. So the overall votes, um, the uh, opposition to same sex was defeated, so same sex marriage was passed. And this is one of the comments. Um, um, a, a reverend said, um, This is from BBC, um, a BBC clip. Uh, he said, BBC News, February 15, 2017. If you want to check it out, he said, This the Reverend Bertrand Olivia, who is gay, told the BBC the church needed to reflect modern society. When you hear that, that's very sad that this is happening. Instead of reflecting the truth, this is this is the spirit of religion. This is the spirit of Satan. You know, you know, this is religion. You know, Satan is for religion, but 
Satan's religion stands against, stands in opposition against the truth, against the true followers of Christ. We need to reflect the truth. That is, in a religion, the spirit of religion is man-made laws, man-made ideas, you know, superseding the word of God. But what does God say about this? What does God say about this? In Isaiah 55:20, the Bible says, What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. And this is what's happening. God is against such people who call evil good. Abortion is evil, killing of an innocent child. Euthanasia is evil. Same sex is evil because God calls an abomination. But today, even the, including the church, is overturning the word of God. But God's word is unchangeable. God word, God's word is the same forever. Forever his word is settled in heaven. And man we stand, you know, judged before this word, the word of God. The Bible says in Exodus 23 2, you must not follow the crowd in doing evil. Just because there are more that um, that come that say that evil is good. There are more that agree that a certain thing is right but it's, it's bad. It, it doesn't mean we should follow them. We are not to be afraid of men who can kill the body but cannot kill this. So we have to fear God because there's judgment coming. There's a wrath, the wrath of God that's coming that's going to fall upon those who reject God, those who deny the truth. So we are warned not to follow the multitude just because many people decide to go a certain way that is contrary to the word of God. That's not mean we should go with them. Like Noah, again, going back to Noah, Noah was standing alone with his family where he stood firm. At the end, the minority carried the vote. God destroyed, don't call the world. Noah had the last, her last laugh. Proverbs 1.15 says, My child, don't go along with them. Stay away from their paths. No matter who they are, no matter how famous, how intelligent, how beautiful they are, as long as they stand against the word of God, don't stand with them because they are going to be judged. They are going to be condemned. Proverbs 4, 14 says, Don't do as the wicked do. Don't follow the path of evil doers. Because again, in New Testament, Romans 1, 32 says, They know God's justice requires that those who do those things deserve to die. Yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them. So, that is one characteristic of false teachers and false teachings. They, they, they um, follow popular opinion. They, they comply more to what people want to hear, what people want, that rather than what the Word of God says. They go against the Word of God, against the heart of God. So another class that we're going to look at is about, about, about false teaching and false teaching is that false teaching do not transform lives. The people are still the same. You know, just said in the last days, religion will flourish. Now, if we go back again to Genesis 4, Cain had just come from the presence of God. He brought his offering. He just worshipped God, he claimed to worship God. But when you look at the heart of Cain, we, we, we find that his heart is not right. He was full of pride, wanting to justify himself before God, not coming to God the right way. He was rejected. And we saw what he did after that. That coming into, coming from the presence of God did not change him. He was still an angry, prideful. He was still filled with bitterness and ended up killing his brother. And so are religious people. And, and false teaching does not transform lives because the religion of Cain is the religion of Satan transform life. So because there's religion today in our world but without reality 
And there are many churches today without Christ. So beware that you are not under the spirit of false teaching. You know, true teaching convicts, challenges, brings you into the presence of God. You know, true teaching makes you broken before God. You know, when people enter in the presence of God, there's an awe. You know, there's a, a, a brokenness, an humbling before God. When Isaiah saw the glory of God, he he, he, he said, what woe is me? He said, woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. You know, when Jesus brought the boat of Peter, and um, after I finished his ministry, you know, Peter ran to him and knelt and said, Lord, depart from me, I'm a sinner. He said, when we get in contact with God, when we get in contact with true teaching and true worship and gospel, there will be a conviction and a challenge you know, of our lives to, to, become a, to become more like Jesus. And also we can encouragement, but conviction will come, challenge and comfort from the Lord. Like, you know, in the book of Naya, where the Bible says, you do not weep for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So, um, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, that you are the salt of the earth, but what good is thought if it has lost its flavor? It's, it's worthless. And there are so many worthless churches, so worthless teachers there, because their lives are not impacting anybody, they're just entertaining people, making people feel comfortable. Church has become a place of houting, of shoe. Though they might praise the Lord, preach about Jesus, but it's another gospel. And that's what Paul said in Galatians 1 6 9. Be careful that if anyone preach another gospel, let him be cursed. Because he knows that there will be people that will preach another gospel. There are people that will manifest a different way. Second Corinthians 11, 4, we read, You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach. See, in so many churches today, many ministries, there are different Jesus being preached. Or a different kind of spirit than the one you received. Or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. The Bible says, for those of us or Christians that are not mature, the simpletons, Proverbs 14, 15 says, the simpletons believe everything they are told. And I've said so many gaudy book Christians today. You know, the, the minister tells them to eat grass, they eat grass. The minister tells them to drink bleach, they drink bleach. The minister tells them to jump, they say, how, how high? Why? Because they are gullible. Because the Bible says they simply think, believe everything. But they put them carefully consider their steps. Amen. In, in uh, Titus 1, Titus chapter 1 verse 16, it says, Such people claim they know God, but they deny Him by the way they live. When you look at the life of these teachers, uh, the, you know, it's full of pride. You know, they, they, they are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Romans 2, chapter 2, 21, 24 says, Well then, if you teach others, these are, the, these are these teachers, why don't you teach yourself? You tell others not to steal, or you steal, they exploit people, they steal them, they con people. Manipulating scriptures, they exploit people to, to, to get their money. You say it is wrong to commit adultery, but you, do you commit adultery? Uh, people who preach against sexual immorality, and, they, and you find that they themselves are living in, 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 in a sinful lifestyle. This, uh, you, you condemn idolatry, but you, you, you yourself use to items stolen from pagan tables. You know, they condemn idolatry, but yet they are living a strict extravagant lifestyles. As if Christianity is based on materialism. Christianity, you know, they, 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 as, as if um, godliness is, is, is a means of making wealth. But the Bible says godliness is contentment. Let your moderation appear to all men. That's what the Bible teaches. And verse 23 of Romans 2, you are so proud of knowing the law, but you dishonor God by breaking it. No wonder the scriptures say the Gentiles blaspheme again the name of God because of it. The same thing with God. Because when we as ministers, leaders, live a life that dishonors God, we become a salt that, that is worthless. We, we, we bring um, we, we, we bring disrepute to the name of God. We cause people to blaspheme the God whom we serve. And even this 
these false teachers, you know, something that they can manifest gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible has warned us that, you know, uh, in Second Corinthians chapter 11, 13 to 15, these people are false apostles. Why? They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I'm not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get punishment that we get this deserve. You know, Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 21, 23 of these false teachers who um, are able to manifest gifts of the Spirit. They might be able to speak in tongues, prophesy, cast out devils, even raise the dead. But one thing that Satan cannot counterfeit is love, love of God and love of people. He said, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, is so saying, well, these people might say, Lord, Lord, they might pray in the name of Jesus. You know, we enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name. But I reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. But the truth is, in the midst of all this, because these false prophets will infiltrate the church. They will infiltrate the church. And um, um, John told us how to identify them. Um, if you open to me to First John, chapter one five to seven, you know John tells us how to identify these people. He said, "This is the message we have from Jesus. Now declare to you, God is light. There is no darkness in Him at all. So we are, we are, so we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness, or if we walk in darkness, because God is light. We are not practicing the truth." But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So John is saying here that anyone who claims to know God or have fellowship with God, but is walking in darkness, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's not practicing the truth. Why? Because God is light. And if God is your father, if you are born of God, you walk in light. You walk in love. But there are many people who say they believe in God. But their lifestyle is contrary to the truth. Believers, false teachers, or false professors. Their lives do not glorify God. Again, John puts it in this way. For and, um, the next chapter, First uh, John chapter two, nine to eleven, it says, "If anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness." Anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. So, the Lord knows those who are his. You see, even in the midst of this, you know, the Lord knows those who are his. 2 Timothy 2.19 But God's truth stands like a firm foundation with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil you see godly teaching transforms life and that's what we need to be aware of that's what you need to know that is if you are attending a church and the minister is not living according to the truth then you need to to pray to god to lead you to a different ministry uh, a different church because the gospel transforms lives the true gospel transforms lives Titus chapter 2, 11 to 12 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all peoples. And we are instructed to turn from ungodliness, denying ungodliness, sinful pleasures, that we should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. The grace of God appeared. That we should deny ungodliness. We should live soberly in this world and godly in this world. That is the gospel. True teaching to produce godly living. So um, we stop here and um, join me next time um, as we continue uh, on the characteristics of false teaching and false teaching. I hope you are blessed and um, and I hope you know Jesus Christ because if you don't, now is the time to give your life to God. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you've fallen away. You've, 
you know you're not consistent you're not devoted as you used to be you've you failed in your first love now is the right time so if you do not know jesus and you want to give your life to christ maybe your friends has been speaking to you about giving your life to christ but you've never had the time now is the time for you to give your life do not leave it to tomorrow do not take the grace of god in vain now is the time of salvation so pray with me to receive jesus into your life let's pray heavenly father i confess that i have sinned against you in my thoughts in my words and actions Lord, I ask that you forgive me. Save me, O oh Lord. I believe that on the cross you died for me. I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for making me your child today. I stand on, on the promise of your word that says, Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Lord God. Today I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome into the family of God. You know, and I pray that God will fill you with this peace and start to um, make yourself available to the Holy Spirit in reading the Word of God and, um, and trusting Him for your everyday life. God is good. God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you for joining me once again. God bless you. Don't forget to share this video, to subscribe, and please pray for us. Pray for me. I need your prayers. That's the most important gift that you can give to me. God bless you. And have a blessed day. In Jesus' name.